to Khalifa University of Science, Technology, and Research. Thank you all for coming on short notice, from your work, from your classes, study, from your busy lives, to hear the wisdom of a great woman. We're here to learn from Dr. Jane Goodall's experience, her research, and insight. Dr. James travels 300 days a year with the intention to improve the world, one person at a time. She is an engaged global citizen, committed People to here the survival back. of humanity, our planet, and all its really well. The Not word that comes to mind to describe Dr. Goodall is inspired action, ilham. As you listen to what Dr. Goodall has to say to us today, think about how you can connect what you are doing and what you are learning and the impact that you make on the world. Inspiration, inspiration takes us just so far. We must respond in jazz. That's achieved with thoughtful intention. What I know for sure is that knowledge is powerful. You, our youth, with knowledge and wisdom, must lead us forward. Today's session is Reasons for Hope. You, the young people, like Sarah, Saeed Mohammed, Bawasir, the president of the Green Crescent Khalifa University Environmental Club, will bring lead us towards hope. Please come, Sarah. The main reason behind establishing Green Crescent Club was to raise awareness about environmental issues. We find it our duty as engineers to innovate and work towards the prosperity and advancement of human beings. While, in, while caring for our environment. We try to influence students' lifestyle by introducing environmental responsibility. Uh, Green Crossing Club encourages students to make, the three, uh, to make the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle, part of their daily routine. We intend to be part of the UAE's, we intend, okay. We intend to be part of the UAE's sustainable, sustainable development as well as the world's outlook for renewable energy. We hope that Khalifa University Green Crescent Club will find a line of communication with our peers in the global community through Dr. James Roots and Shoes Society. Thank you. Sarah brings us a true reason for hope. Doctor, I'm honored to welcome Dr. Todd Larson, the distinguished president of Khalifa University. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. I don't, I don't think I could have said, I could have, could have said it any better than, than what you and your colleagues just did. It's a. It's a tremendous honor uh, to, to welcome Jane Goodall uh, to Khalifa University. Um, I, I mentioned to Dr. Goodall earlier on a personal note, my wife, as some of you may know, is a biologist, and unfortunately for her, she's out of the country until Monday, so she's rather irritated that she's not here today. But I think uh, I would share the sentiment, we would certainly share the sentiment of many in the room. I see many families here, many students. Uh, that, that Dr. Goodall has been a hero for a long time to many of us. I think, as you know, she's a British primatologist, pathologist, anthropologist, and a UN messenger of peace. She's well known, I think, as the world's foremost expert on chimpanzees, and perhaps best known for her 45 year study of social and family interactions of wild uh, chimpanzees excuse me, in Gombe Stream National Park, Tanzania. She's founded the Jane Goodall Institute and has worked extensively on conservation and animal welfare issues. In the late 70s, Dr. Goodall established the Jane Goodall Institute, which supports the Gami research we mentioned earlier. And she's a global leader in the effort to protect chimpanzees and their habitats. With 19 offices around the world, the JGI is widely recognized for innovative community-centered conservation and development programs in Africa. As we heard a little bit ago, uh, its global youth program, Roots and Shoots, began in 1991 when a group of 16 local teenagers met with Dr. Goodall on her back porch in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. They were eager to discuss a wide range of problems they knew about from their first-hand experience that really had them concerned. 
this organization remarkably now has over 10,000 groups in over 100 countries, so that maybe accounts for some of those 300 days of travel a year. Dr. Goodall is the former president of Advocates for Animals, an organization based in Edinburgh, Scotland, that campaigns against the use of animals in medical research, zoos, farming, and sport. And uh, I don't really know what else I can say. It's just a, a tremendous uh, and humbling experience to be able to welcome here to Khalifa. Uh, maybe just to try to add a little bit to, to what Sarah said, I think is as everybody here realizes, we're a university that you know, tries to emphasize the sciences, engineering, and, and, and medicine primarily in our offerings. And I'm not speaking as a mechanical engineer and having led an energy and the environment educational institute at another institution. I'm not sure there's anything more important for an engineer to learn today uh, than the principles of caring for the environment and thinking about the environment and sustainability in the course of doing our work. Uh, which unfortunately has not always been done uh, by engineers. Uh, and so it's a great honor to be here and uh, a, a great pleasure on my part to be able to welcome uh, Dr. Goodall to Philippa University. Well, first of all, uh, good afternoon to everybody. And yes, thank you all for coming. It's great to see you all. And I just left the American Community School with lots of little creatures sitting on the floor at my feet. And so this is a, a different kind of feeling and obviously will be a slightly different kind of talk. I always feel when I go to a, a new country how wonderful it would be if I was good at languages. I would love to be able to pick up languages and at least do a little uh, little bit of talking, but I've never been able to learn languages. So I wouldn't even try to say anything in Arabic, but I can introduce you to a language that I did learn over the years. And I'm going to share with you the greeting that you would hear if you came with me to Gombe National Park in Tanzania. To me, it's one of the most evocative sounds of the African forest. And <clears throat> It's hello. <laughs> and what is very special about that call is that every chimpanzee has his or her own individual voice. So if you hear that call, you know exactly who's calling. And this is important because chimpanzees live in what we call a com community of about 50 individuals. And they don't travel around in a group like that. They travel around in small, always changing groups, a mother and her offspring, a group of males, sometimes a big mixed group when there's a delicious food available. And because of this, what's called a fusion fission society, it means that these calls really help them to know where the other members of the community are. And chimpanzees are always having to make decisions. I want to say a little bit later about their intellect, but I think the fact that when you wake up in the morning, if you're a chimpanzee, you don't just follow your troop like most monkeys. No, do I go off with those males? Maybe we go on a boundary patrol and it's exciting. Do I wander about by myself just searching for food, which is peaceful? So always these decisions. But before I go into any of that, I wanted to go back to the beginning. Because so many people say, well, Jane, how did it all start? Why were you interested in chimpanzees? How did it happen? So I picked out just a few slides uh, to talk about these kind of things. And then I want to go on to really why I came to Dubai, which is to talk about the problems that face our planet today. Well, here is Jane at 18 months. And maybe it was uh, some kind of strange coincidence, <clears throat> but when I was that age, my father gave me a stuffed chimpanzee. And that is not the, the little person I have with me now, by the way, just in case you're thinking it is. Uh, 